glad in their maker. Let the children of Zion rejoice in their king. The Lord takes delight in his people. Let them praise his name in the festive dance. Let them sing praise to him with timbrel and harp. For the Lord loves his people and he adorns the lowly with victory. The Lord takes delight in his people. Let the faithful exult in glory. Let them sing for joy upon their couches. Let the high praises of God be in their throats. This is the glory of all his faithful. Alleluia. The Lord takes delight in his people. The spirit of truth will testify to me, says the Lord, and you also will testify. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus said to his disciples, When the Advocate comes, whom I will send you from the Father, the Spirit of truth who proceeds from the Father, he will testify to me. And you also testify, because you have been with me from the beginning. I have told you this so that you may not fall away. They will expel you from the synagogues. In fact, the hour is coming when everyone who kills you will think he is offering worship to God. They will do this because they have not known either the Father or me. I have told you this so that when their hour comes, you may remember that I told you. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. So in our gospel this week, uh, we get into chapter 16 of John's, uh, John's gospel. And uh, Jesus gives us these um, prophecies of what's, what's to come in a lot of ways, preparing his disciples for life after, um, after his ascension, uh, which of course is coming up this week as well. Um, leading then next week into the, uh, the great uh, high priestly prayer of Jesus in John 17. But uh, here today, Jesus is telling his disciples, um, you're going to be persecuted. People are going to hate you because you're talking about me. Uh, and in fact, there are going to be people who even uh, kill you thinking that they're doing the right thing. And of course, we see this with St. Paul who in his letters tells us um, he thought he was doing right by persecuting this sect of Judaism that was clearly, from his standpoint, in error, uh, was a, um, was a sore spot in the, uh, uh, on the Jewish people. But of course, the Lord um, straightened him out. But there were others who certainly um, did the same thing, who persisted. But as we hear these stories, he tells them, don't be afraid. You don't have to worry about them. Um, he tells us in other places uh, in, the, in the gospel not to... Um, not to worry about having to defend yourself because he will be with them. 
Um, and so he brings to light the truth. And so he says that uh, when the advocate comes, whom I will send you, he will testify and you also testify. And of course we see what happens um, with St. Paul. Going from persecutor to disciple and, and eventually to persecuted too. Today, of course, he's, he's not. He uh, finds openness in the, in the woman, Lydia, who probably was um, fairly wealthy considering that she dealt in purple cloth and that was something that was uh, very, um, it was worth a lot of money in the ancient world. But she hears the message and uh, the Lord opened her heart. And so we recognize too that there is an element in us that that has to be open. Um, we have to be open to hearing the word of God. And so those who persecute um, because they think they're doing what's right, we don't give up hope for them. We don't give up hope for those who are not living the gospel. We don't give up hope um, for those who really aren't paying attention at all. Because the Lord can still open their hearts. The Lord can still uh, bring them, like St. Paul, from persecutor to disciple. We ask the Lord to uh, help those who are um, not open to the gospel and also to help those who are being persecuted for their faith in, in him. That the persecuted may stay strong in their faith and the persecutors may be opened to listen to the message of the gospel and to be converted, that they also may be saved. Let us bring before the Lord our petitions. For the church throughout the world, especially for the faithful who are being persecuted for the faith, that they may find courage and hope in the Lord who sends his spirit to be with them. Let us pray to the Lord. for the leaders of our world, that their hearts may be opened to the truth and that they may uh, live that truth in their personal lives as a, an example to those who follow them. Let us pray to the Lord. For those who need healing in any way, especially those in our parish book of prayers, for those fighting infectious diseases in this time, and for any others that we hold in our own hearts. May they find the healing help of the Lord. Let us pray to the Lord. For those who have died marked with the sign of faith, they may, may they find eternal rest in the peace of God's kingdom. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord Heavenly Father, we bring these prayers before you this day. We ask that you hear and grant them in accord with your holy will. For we ask them through Christ our Lord.
Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you. Fruit to the vine and work of human hands, it will become our spiritual drink. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Receive, O Lord, we pray, these offerings of your exultant church. And as you have given her cause for such great gladness, grant also that the gifts we bring may bear fruit in perpetual happiness. Through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, at all times to acclaim you, O Lord. But in this time above all, to laud you yet more gloriously, when Christ, our Passover, has been sacrificed. He never ceases to offer himself for us, but, never, but defends us and ever pleads our cause before you. He is the sacrificial victim who dies no more, the lamb once slain who lives forever. Therefore, overcome with paschal joy, every land, every people exults in your praise. And even the heavenly powers with the angelic hosts sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim, Holy, Holy, Holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy. And you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you, by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread. And giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice. And giving you thanks, he said the blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me.
mystery of faith. Save us, Savior of the world, for by your cross and resurrection, you have set us free. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray, upon the oblation of your church, and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you willed to reconcile us to yourself, grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with his Holy Spirit may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you, so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, blessed Joseph, her spouse, your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, and with all the saints, on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth, with your servant Francis our Pope and George our Bishop, the order of bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom we have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world, to our departed brothers and sisters, and to all who are pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory, through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Lamb of God. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed.
Jesus stood in the midst of his disciples and said to them, Peace be with you. Alleluia.
Let us pray. Look with kindness upon your people, O Lord, and grant, we pray, that those you are pleased to renew by eternal mysteries may attain in their flesh the incorruptible glory of the resurrection. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. A couple things for this week. Um, our school mass schedule is off a little bit, uh, quite a bit actually, so no school mass tomorrow or Wednesday morning. Uh, but Thursday morning, we'll have the kindergartners here uh, for the holy, with the, the Holy Day Mass at 8.15. Uh, and then Friday, the 8th graders will have a, a special Mass. So uh, the 8.15 won't have kids here, but uh, they're still getting their Masses in this week. But, uh, so Thursday will be the only day this week that we have kids here for the 8.15. Um, and as far as the holy, holy Day goes, just a reminder that we have the Vigil Mass for the Ascension on Wednesday at 6.30 p.m. And then um, Thursday, we have 6.30 a.m., 8.15 a.m., and 6.30 p.m. for our Masses. So, um, there you go. And I think that's it. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your life. Amen. Our prayers after Mass. First, our prayer for the world during the outbreak of the coronavirus. To you, O blessed Joseph, do we come in our tribulation. Through that charity which bound you to the Immaculate Virgin Mother of God, and through the paternal love with which you embrace the child Jesus, we humbly beg you graciously to regard the inheritance which Jesus Christ has purchased by his blood, and with your power and strength to aid us in our necessities. O most loving Father, ward off from us every contagion of error and corrupting influence. Our most mighty protector, be propitious to us, and from heaven assist us in our struggle with the power of darkness. And as once you rescued the child Jesus from deadly peril, so now protect God's children from the snares of the enemy and from all adversity. Shield to each one of us by your constant protection. Amen. Prayer for the deceased. God, our Father, we commend our dear departed ones to your loving care. We know that death is not the end, but only a horizon that limits our sight, and that life with you is immortal and love eternal. Receive them into your love, that they may see you face to face and come to the full enjoyment of your life and happiness. Jesus, through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Prayer for vocations. Jesus, you are the good shepherd. You know each of us, and you call us by name to serve the faith. Help us respond generously to your voice. Give courage and guidance to those you call to the priesthood, the diaconate, religious life, sequel, sacramental marriage, so that they may respond wholeheartedly and serve devotedly. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. St. Michael, the archangel, send us in battle. We ask for us in the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray. And do thou, o Prince of the heavenly host, by the power of God, Cast into hell Satan and all evil spirits who prowl about the world seeking the ruin of souls. Amen.